right, well here we go. Take a good look. Um, last time we had this bike in the stand, I did a video. We did a little bit of work on the uh, rear shock. Uh, what we did was we changed out the um, lower eyelet on this shock, changed this, this guy down here to an offset bushing. Um, it uh, from that company right there. And the offset bushing, I think, uh, took out um, four tenths of a degree of head angle, and so that was a uh, that was a good, that was a nice little mod that uh, that helped slacken things out a little bit. Also lowered the bottom bracket uh, a touch. Um, this time we're going to spend some time on the front of the bike. Um, in this particular case, I'm swapping out the RockShox Bluto uh, fork for a Manitou Mastodon. Um, so I'll be going from a 120 setup, uh, 120 millimeter travel to a 140. I uh, already had my shop converted, already had the shop cut the steer tube to length and set the star nut. So all that's left to do is to drop the brand new fork uh, in place of this one. So uh, what are some of the things I'm going for? Why am I making the swap? Well, this is one of the reasons, but it's not really, you know, this is a this is one I've been able to cope with. So, uh, I think I said in another video that with the Bontrager Barbagazi 275 by 4.5, it's a 120 TPI tire, I've been able to, you know, I basically get up to 6.75 PSI uh, before the shape of the tire um, starts to get to the point where it rubs the crown under uh, compression, under fork compression. So um, that's a little low for the kind of trail riding I'll be doing um, in the, the nine months or 10 months that uh, I really don't have snow on the ground and I can you know, ride trail bikes on trails, ride this like a trail bike on the trails. And so that's one of the reasons. So the Manitou Mastodon Pro EXT model, extended model, has the capacity to um, to handle a 275 by 4.5 um, uh, tire. Uh, the other thing that the Mastodon has that this fork doesn't is um, high-speed compression. Um, and that's, uh, that is a feature that I tend to use. I'm a heavier rider, um, a little crashy, I'd say. Um, um, not much for finesse. Uh, and um, the high-speed compression um, is something that I tend to use on uh, my other bikes. I've got a Diamond, a DVO Diamond on one of my trail bikes. I've got a Fox 36 on another. And uh, with my weight and my riding style, I tend to use um, high-speed compression um, if I can get it. I tend to run some, um, and, it, and it helps, it, it helps uh, me. Um, this fork doesn't have it. Um, most, most, forks, most forks, though, do have low-speed compression. And most forks these days also have the, uh, um, you know, the RockShox uses bottomless tokens, um, uh, Fox uses uh, volume spacers, and the, the Manitou uh, model has uh, their own variety of it. It's uh, called the um, um, uh, uh, volume adjust, um, some sort of acronym for, for volume adjust, same idea. So, um, that's the work we're going to be doing today. The, the work is fairly straightforward. Um, let's see, we've got to, we've got to take the, uh, we've got to loosen this, so separate the, the brake cable from the arch. Uh, I've got to take the caliper, uh, remove the caliper from the fork. It looks like I've got a spacer on there, and that's important because I believe this is a 180 rotor. Let me see if I can find it. Bolt torque, I can almost see it. There you are. Yeah, um, a center line 180 rotor, and it looks like I got the spacer here already, which should just, uh, this piece here, which should just uh, migrate over to the other, to, you know, to the Manitou. So, take off the caliper, take off the, um, take off the, the cable guide, uh, drop the stem, or loosen the stem, drop it out, and we should be good to go. So let me get the, let me get the uh, shop ready and, um, and set up and then we'll get started. So I'm here in the middle of the teardown and there's a nice little observation 
Um, this is this is the price of experimenting. So running a 275 by 4.5, I hope you can see in the light there, or underneath the arch, you can see the worn away piece of the arch. So that's on me. It's a perfectly shaped grooves that have eaten into the bottom of the fork arch that match the center groove and then just worn away by the tires. So all the more reason why I shouldn't be running a 275 by 4.5 on that Bluto at any pressure, I guess. And uh, again, price of experimentation. So this uh, fork, I guess, is going to be relegated to light duty. Probably end up on one of my kids' bikes who, you know, are half of my size and weight, so, uh, and even less, and won't even stretch the, the capabilities of the, you know, flex this fork. So I think it's perfectly fine, um, but uh, there you go. It's the price of my own progress anyway. Um, so should have stuck with the 275 by 3.8s, and as soon as, uh, and as soon as, what's it called, uh, Maxxis came out with their Minion FBF, I should have just thrown that on instead of sticking with the 4.5 um, Barbagazi. All right. All right, so I pulled the Bluto and uh, dropped it out. So that's, that's why you see the handlebars just hanging here. Um, and when I did that, I uh, took the opportunity to inspect and clean the upper and lower um, uh, bearings. So these actually, these actually pull right out, but I'm not going to do that now. The upper and lower pull right out. I was disappointed to find that the uh, the outer race, uh, the part that sits in the bore, uh, the upper what what we call the cups, the upper and lower um, head tube, the cups in the head tube. Um, uh, were were discolored. Um, they were weathered. Now, I've had the bike since November. I think that's right. And um, I I should have probably taken them out uh, or left them out and taken a picture. They were just a little discolored. Um, I uh, took a I cleaned them up. Took a wire brush, uh, light wire brush to them. Um, um, you know, cleaned them up. Uh, uh, and then uh, packed them with grease, uh, not heavily, but you can see it's just a little bit of residual there. So the uh, the uh, I, I did the same. I greased the cups, the uh, the the upper and lower uh, cups that these sit into, and now I'm just going to get the fork. There's the other one right there. So I'm just going to get the uh, I'm just going to get the fork. Uh, set it in here and, um, and and slap it all back together. So still uh, nearing the end of the assembly. I mean, I got the fork on. I got the spacers. Steer tube's a little long, but I was uh, doing this really just to fuss around with, with height. Um, it's about a quarter inch longer, the steer. I left the steer about a quarter inch longer than the, um, than the outgoing fork. Um, that's all right, but I already found the first, um, you know, sort of test fit issue, and I think I'm going to have to bust out the Sugru um, moldable rubber for this. And that's when you turn the fork, the um, compression wants to hit right there, and so that is not clearance. There is no clearance there. This can't spin around. And the way I've solved this in the past is you put a a dot of moldable rubber right under there to absorb the impact it's not a fix it's a it's a it's preventive but it doesn't mean that if you don't spin the bars you know in an unplanned exit if you're if you come off the bike and these uh, and this fork whips around it's probably going to take out the down tube um, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, I'll get this all fitted up and then uh, we'll figure out where I put the dot of, uh, of the of the rubber um, so that in an unfortunate event of a impact it doesn't take out the down tube that's it the other side works fine the, the height on this guy isn't isn't the same um, this the the uh, volume adjust is um, pretty flush relatively speaking this one though is not flush and it wants to hit right there 
So I need to get uh, need to get some moldable rubber and stick it in there, and we'll be good to go. All right, I'll continue on with the with the assembly. All right, well we're picking up where we left off yesterday. Um, <clears throat> had some te technical difficulties. I um, ran the battery out of the my phone. I shoot video on my phone, and uh, so. <laughs> So, uh, surprise, the fork's on. Everything went on just fine. Um, there is a clearance issue uh, that I'll point out, and it has to do with the, um, the, the stack height on the adjuster. So, this height um, right here doesn't clear the uh, down tube, so I've had to make a quick modification. And uh, right now I'm testing it with just this uh, 3M um, um, electrical tape application. It's actually a bit padded. I featured this in another video where I had some fork leg protection, but I put two layers. I have a two inch wide strip below a one inch wide strip uh, just to take up uh, some of the impact. Again, in the unfortunate event that uh, I actually have to, uh, I have an unplanned dismount and the bars spin around. But uh, here's the clearance. Um, it actually comes very close without, with, without the tape. The, um, the, um, High speed compression adjuster comes very close to clearing, but it doesn't clear. So I'm going to turn the bar. Let's see if I can show you what that looks like. So that's where we are. Um, it comes, you know, and so the so the if I pull this back, you'll see a little bit of a, a dimple in the in the tape, which is what I'm counting on uh, having happen. And there's the dimple. Um, and then it, uh, and it, and then the dimple, you know, disappears. But this is really just a hack for the moment, just to see what kind of clearance I've got, um, see how this works, and then I'll follow this back through with, uh, with some Sugru, and um, and and do it up, do it upright with a smaller, a smaller uh, patch. Okay. Besides that, I've uh, I've jammed uh, 10 psi in the front tire. And I'm running 10 in the back. I've got my uh, tire pressure gauge with me, so we'll see how I'll do some some tuning of some tire pressure. I've never had this thing above uh, six or seven p uh, seven psi on the front. The front end is noticeably higher. Um, I can see that this bike looks cartoonishly large, particularly in the front. I mean, it just look at the look at the clearance in here. Just this entire space here is just it's just enormous. Um, uh, this definitely looks bigger in person than it does in pictures or on film, but uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump on this thing and, uh, and get riding. Alright, so I'm at the Rockland Preserve in Madison, Connecticut, borders Madison and Durham. And uh, I just finished, um, I'm on the, came up the East Loop, um, East Trail, and first test is really um, how to do climbing and together I kind of look at things as a system so I did fool around with the low speed compression on here and um, and and as expected um, the four settings on low speed and it I have to say um, a little too stiff uh, for me uh, fully locked out however if you're one for efficiency um, <clears throat> and that's a sustained climb that I just came up to the top I'm gonna ascend to the to uh, well, I've, I'm at Summit Station now. Um, locked out is good, and then down here, you know, um, uh, kicked it over to uh, the climb setting. About halfway through, there were some skinnies and some um, some rocky sections that you just traverse in the flats. I uh, kicked it back to open. Sometimes I ride in trail, but uh, for the most part, I tended to forget that I've locked it out. Um, so I generally leave them open. I am finding that there's less, a little bit less fork dive. I was doing um, the parking lot, um, a break in of my uh, of some new brake pads for the front. I switched from organics to semi metal to uh, metallics, and um, so I was doing the parking lot test, and I noticed some fork dive in the uh, full open low speed compression setting in setting one. Uh, dropped it to two. I noticed less dive, as you'd expect. Um, and so I'm going to toggle between one and two. Let's see what feels good. Um, other than that, haven't had a much haven't had much of a chance to test anything else. Um, the the last half or the last uh, third, you do a lot of traversing around the summit, and then on the descent, I'll get a chance to uh, 
test, relatively speaking, the chassis stiffness of uh, the Mastodon uh, versus the Bluto that, uh, that just came off of this. All right, stay tuned.